Yorana, bienvenue dans les Inside Doc. Aujourd'hui, nous avons le plaisir de recevoir le réalisateur de Kahuakai. Donc, un voyage qui nous invite à la découverte du Meri Monarch et de la danse hawaïenne, le hula. Hello, Yorana, and welcome to the FIFO, digital FIFO, to, uh, this year. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Thanks for having How's us. How's it going in Hawaii right now? Uh, pretty good. You know, it's, I think it's just like everywhere else, it's up and down, uh, but better than the rest of the continent, you know, so we can't complain and too much. And we have a little dog. Yeah, we have a little dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry. All right. Hi, Derry. So uh, do you have like project in standby right now? Um, a project like happening right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's actually a lot of activity in Hawaii right now. Uh, lots of projects happening, uh, but you could kind of similar to what's happening with you. Uh, a lot of virtual events and us helping with the virtual events, and even making a kids' TV show. So there's a theater group that can't uh, have plays anymore. So we're making a virtual or sort of a TV show for kids in Keiki, in Hawaii. So um, you know we're keeping pretty active and busy. So we're here to talk about uh, your film, uh, your documentary about hula, Kahuakai. Can you first explain the title, Kahuakai? Yeah, sure. Uh, Kahuakai, uh, it was actually probably the first <laughs> name we came up with. Uh, and of course, we tried to come up with some, something better. But it pretty much just means the journey um, because uh, the whole time we were making the movie, we kept saying, this is a journey. It's the journey of, of, of everyone that's a part of it. And it feels like a journey um, seeing the whole process, you know, who, uh, the, the preparation, the performance, everything is, it just feels like it's a journey. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about the journey, we must think about the beginning of this journey and maybe go back and retrace the history of this journey and we must go back to Kalakaua. Can you explain a bit of history hints about uh, the beginning of the Mary Monarch? Sure. Uh, actually, you know, the, the beginning of Mary Monarch, of course, you know, King Kalakaua was an inspiration. He, he actually goes even further back. I mean, he, he kind of brought it back from e extinction, you know, and kind of revitalized um, a lot of, of, of what Hula is today. Um, but, you know, actually Mary Monarch, uh, Auntie Luana, who uh, we tried to interview for the film, is, uh, her family is actually hugely responsible for the actual competition of Mary Monarch. Um, and that family line uh, sort of, uh, you know, helps to bring it together every year um, and kind of honor the tradition that King Kalakaua has done. And that's why you see the portrait and you see Um, all that at Mary Monarch every year. Mm -hmm. uh, when we deal with the idea of journey, uh, that means that we have tempests sometimes in this journey. Can you explain to us uh, what kind of difficulties do we have uh, with hula? Do we have a kind of uh, resignation or struggle against colonialism as well? or maybe something more positive, a resolution? Uh, that's a, it's a good question and a deep question, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, but there's a lot of issues when it comes to hula, right? Um, and, it, and that's going to be a topic you could have a whole discussion about. Um, the, these particular, um, you know, Malalo and Meles uh, are very specific and Like if uh, Kumo Lono and uh, and Kumo uh, Kiano, um, theirs you know their story is more about the Ohi rapid Ohia death that, that's happening uh, that started on the Big Island, and they have a theory that um, they believe that uh, when the volcanoes erupted, when the volcano erupted, uh, that was Pele's way of scrapping it all, the rapid Ohia death, the disease, and letting it. Um, come back and flourish a little bit. And, and you also see that in the film. And, and it was one of those chicken skin moments in our lives because when we went to go film where the eruptions were near the crater, there was this uh, 
Ohia was flourishing um, and just full of life. Unfortunately, you know, uh, one of the collaborators that worked on the film has gone back and now it's dying again, you know? So um, that particular story is about that. And the other Halals had, you know, different stories that they wanted to tell. And um, I, you could go on forever. You know, a hula, they say hula is life. And, you know, and it's one of the important elements when the, when we talk about the Mauna and what happened at Mauna Kea and, and hula Obviously. and the community that's, you know, uh, that wraps around it. But we didn't dive that deep. You know, we didn't go that deep. And, and, but hula is a way of life uh, for the people who are in this film. Um, and I think they're great ambassadors for it. That's interesting. Um, and we can feel throughout the movie that there's a need uh, of spirituality. And uh, it, it, is that a struggle between this spirituality and the modern world in Hawaii? Uh, I mean, it, it, that's a complicated question, you know, because, um, you know, there's tradition um, and and. I don't want to answer for the Kumus and how they they would see it because there is a uh, from a colonial pr perspective, it's right. You know, it's it's there's a, a way that they want to see things and do things, but um, hula tradition sees things. It's it's all stories, and um, the legends are just as valid as you know, um, kind of the religion that was pushed. I, I don't want to dive into this because I think I, I think this is going to get me in trouble, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, my feeling, uh, I want to know, as a filmmaker, how did you feel this uh, way of passing down the mana? Mana is the word that uh, is uh, recurrent in this movie, which is repeated throughout the movie. So I felt it like they try to convince themselves that the mana exists. So what is your opinion as a filmmaker? If the mana existed, if, uh, if it was a part of the, you know, kind if of bringing If they, it is a doom belief or it's a real belief about definitely the mana? A, definitely a real belief. Definitely, right. you know. Um, you know, because it, it's kind of like, uh, uh, there's no other word but mana, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the power, the energy, um, something that helps give that lift, right? Um, but yeah, it's definitely real um, and definitely something that is felt throughout. Even for us behind the camera, we can feel the mana, all right? Like someone's, uh, you know, providing that, that, that extra, you know, for us. How how do you feel about uh, the young Keiki, the the, the children about uh, hula, their the, the regards about hula? Uh, do you think that they do hula as a sport or something else uh, rather than something spiritual? Ooh, uh, another good question. You you have a, a lot of good questions, and again, Akumu could probably talk a little bit to that point, and I can only offer my opinion. Um, you know, and I, I think, um, Keiki are going to start for different reasons. You know, maybe their parents, uh, were heavy into hula and, and then they start that way. But if you are truly learning hula, then that spirituality has to come with it. Um, I, I think there's no way of separating the spirituality, um, from the hula. It's just a part of the dance. It's part of the yeah i it i know there there are other people out there that just sell hula and don't sell the other side of it but to me it's not hula if you have the whole package the spirituality the malelos uh the the stories and um the hula that comes with it it's it's that's why it's the journey right it's everything oh do you practice hula and I actually don't. Um, I was just around it my whole life. Um, and I had a lot of friends uh, who were in those halals that won at Mary Monarch. 
Um, and I could, and I would see them practice and, and things of that sort, but I was actually more of a break dancer and not a hula. That's great too. <laughs> yeah. But I grew up, you know, around hula my whole life. So, um, but truthfully, I, I didn't really get the, the, the gravity of it until we did this film, um, okay. you know, kind of peeking behind the tradition, the spirituality and, um, and uh, actually, this is also a part of that renaissance, uh, you know, of and I, I, I don't know how much people know, but, you know, the language was almost eradicated language, hula. And, uh, and some of these, uh, the melee and, and some of the chanting and dancing almost is, was almost lost, gone. And it's only preserved through uh, vocal storytelling. And so uh, that was a profound effect on me because it's almost like this film is kind of that, which is preserving um, the tradition, the culture um, for future generations. That's pretty interesting. You talked about Renaissance and my, ne my, my next question was about revival or survival. So as a filmmaker, uh, what was the aim of doing a film about hula? Was it about the survival or, or the revival of hula? Again, you have lots of good questions. And, and truthfully, this project started because, um, you know, Hawaiian Airlines actually said, uh, we want you to follow employees of Hawaiian Airlines and see what happens. And we asked, could we have a dancer a kumu and and possibly more of a legacy story and they were able to find the people uh that were a part of it and we just got lucky that they were like the best ambassadors of of hula you know and that was kind of the genesis of the story and then i had to go chasing and try to find the story and what it was and it's it's definitely um to me it's renaissance and not so much but I I would say it's survival too. Like, like to the point that I said before, you know, we are through this document and through this film, we're preserving, um, you know, the tradition. So it's, it's survival in that sense that we're, it's going to survive because of this, but it's not just the film, but it's Mary Monarch, right? This happens every year at Mary Monarch, but just no one has captured like all the elements of what goes into the preparation so it's almost like uh the same thing i talked about you know how hula and some of the dances and, and the chanting was passed down vocally and um you know it and it there's no other way it wasn't written or anything like that so what else are you going to do but film this process because people are never going to see or hear what happens behind a lot of the work that leads up to Mary Monarch. And this was our, our way of preserving it in a way um, to show people what it really takes. All right. And um, do you think that, uh, just to let us know the situation in Hawaii about culture, um, do you think that Halau and the Mary Monarch is the only place or the only space for the preservation of culture? Uh, I would I would say that's definitely I wouldn't s say it's the only place you know because it's it's definitely thriving now it's uh, people are more aware and Mount Akeda had a big part of that of, of putting culture um, you know on the forefront and um, and also unifying uh, Hawaiians um, for a cause um, and we're seeing more of that and I think. Um, and those are other avenues and other platforms to keep it going. And, you know, like I said, at, at the Mauna, they were dancing hula. They were teaching people, uh, having full on class sessions and, and things like that. And I would, I would say that that uh, was just a great moment in time where, uh, where they were, they're having that. And so Mary Monarch, it's unfortunate it's a competition, but it is a platform where, where um, people can, share the art form of hula um but there's definitely a lot more places um where one can share the culture 
but like the Kumu would say, hula is life. Um, so it's not just a dance, not just a lifestyle, but it's a way of thinking and a way of going about um, life in general. Um, and um, I know that just like Oritahiti, which is Tahitian dance, uh, you do go abroad to uh, uh, share your knowledge, your culture, etc. So uh, how do you feel about uh, people from outside dancing hula, uh, foreigners, Japanese people or uh, Mexican people and so on? Well, uh, I think Lisette Flannery covered that topic really well in Tokyo Hula, you know, which is another great documentary, seeing it from that perspective, um, you know, which is, uh, it's almost like it's a commodity, like they're selling Hula more like, like Burger King or McDonald's. Um, and, uh, and I, I think I'll, I'll go back on my point. I, I don't think that's Hula. I don't, this is my opinion though. This is just, you know, Gerard's opinion, not the Kumu speaking or anyone like that. But to me, it just feels like uh, true hula is uh, way more than dance. Um, and I, I am not sure, and I can't speak for everyone that's teaching, you know, globally, that they're, you know, um, teaching the story behind it, the spirituality behind it, um, uh, intention and, and all these things that go with it. Yeah, it means that the genuine hula must be on the land of Hawaii. Is that right? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that because there are some kumu there from here that go to Japan and teach. I would say that's they're probably going to, and, and you know, like in Tokyo hula, you know, like Sunny Ching, who is from here, who's you know, teaching the more proper hula. Um, so I don't think it's it's not you can't truly practice it outside of Hawaii, but um, I think there's just a way of doing it right. Yeah. Well, let's say that genuine hula is, by, is taught by uh, indigenous people, actually. Oh, yeah, and that's possible too. You know, it's just, it comes down again to attention, um, knowing the story behind it and uh, your motivation. And it's, it's more that than, it, than who you are, where you come from. You know, because I have good friends who are kumus and, uh, you know, they're not Hawaiian or, or, or they're not from here, but their intention is pure and, and they also are coming with the right mindset, right? And I, I, I just, again, it's my opinion. I just think that's just how you got to do it because there's protocols and all sorts of things that go with it. Um, asking for permission, even, uh, you know, when you, you make your costumes and, and researching and genealogy and all all things that go with it um yeah it's, there's there's a lot of layers so i got a bit picky about that sorry <laughs> sorry about that so uh let me say that hula is closely linked to uh hawaiian language so if you want to uh capture the way of life capture the spirituality, the philosophy, actually, uh, you must speak the language. Uh, I think that's pretty accurate as of now. Uh, I think, I think the beauty is that who is always going to evolve, you know, uh, you know, in this point in time, that is, I think, very accurate though. Um, you know, and, um, cause I, I don't know how you would do it in English, or, you know, in French or, or in any other native tongue, right? Um, but maybe that's something for people in the future to see, you know, if it fits, if, it, if you can adapt it that way. But it will always evolve. It's not to say that you, this is the only way to do it, right? Um, it will continue to evolve and, and leaders in the group will um, define it and kind of point point us into the into the future apart from uh the awana dance uh, do you have any modern or contemporary uh hawaiian dance in hawaii uh, or maybe attempts of <laughs> i think that awana is uh is probably it um kohiko you know which is what we focus in the film is more traditional um you know, hula, it's more, you know, old school 
Pula. Uh, and we made the the decision to ditch Awana uh, because it was just, um, I think we had to keep it pretty focused for the film. But Awana is fun. Um, and, and there's actually a lot of room to explore and to, to do some wild stuff. And some of Awana, you know, from that year, there was some really creative uh, work. Um, and, but sometimes the, the judges don't get it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so you're the, it just depends on who the judges are, if you're going to win or not. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of room for creativity in that one. Uh, but you, you have long time judges, I see, because I saw that Kiali Irishel has been judging for four years or five years now and stuff like that. They, they switch out. Uh, you know, it's, uh, there's going to be, you know, people who are more uh, of the expert type. Um, that are in there and um, uh, this year I knew the year that we documented I knew two of the judges or maybe one and so I was asking them what they were you know looking for and you know it, it it's I think it's just going to come down to what they dig what they you know like um, and um, yeah it it's just going to vary you just never know Mm-hmm. which is amazing to me because the halal that are in the film they've won multiple times so that just tell that just tells you they just they have a feel you know for what the judges like okay oh i'm just asking this question because we have the same concern over here but here with the ori tahiti uh i've been part of this uh, trend actually with uh contemporary ori tahiti uh dance and uh I can do as well, like very traditional and go back to like Mare and uh, show like more traditional dance. So we don't feel like uncomfortable with that. So in my opinion, uh, one, the people should let uh, the young generation appropriate themselves, their own culture with their own feelings, knowing that the past is uh, passed down to them like a heritage, but they have to build their own rocks. So I don't know how is that feeling go in uh, Hawaii? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, 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 it's interesting. You know, I, I feel like um, there's a lot of inspiration from uh, hula, just in general, just the foundational roots. I'll give an example. Let's just go outside of um, hula world for now. But um, there's a designer that I'm good friends with, Mana Ola, um, and he's a he's a kumu and he's a dancer of hula, and he actually started his business, you know, uh, because he would uh, design costumes for the halal, right? And, and some uh, like the shirt I'm wearing is uh, Ari South, and Ari South she she used to dance as well, um, but they find inspiration, you know, in the past in in the templates. Um, so for like Mana Ola, he goes to Bishop Museum and researches and, and sees some of the patterns. And then he takes it and embraces it and then puts a more modern spin on it. You know, and what that would mean is a more modern cut, you know, um, more modern looking clothes, but layering that with more traditional patterns. Um, you know, and so it's the same. I think you see a lot of that happening, which is you're going to have these young bucks and I think that's uh, Kumu Lono and Kumu Kiano in the film. They are those guys, which is their, oh. you know, they're, they are those guys. Uh, they're, they're kind of more um, always looking, you know, to kind of uh, uh, evolve a little bit. But in the same time, firmly, you know, ha- have that tra- traditional um, side of it, you know, in the back of their mind. Um, and and some of their uh, the hula uh, hula um, colleagues um, are are evolving hula, you know, rapidly. So, and and one of them one of them is uh, my my daughter's kumu. So, um, you know, we talk about that. All right. Um, how how do Hawaii people uh, consider hula in Hawaii? <laughs> That's a that's a hard question. Uh, you know, is it is it hula is hula uh, just for uh, Hawaiian people and Hawaii people, for example? 
Oh yeah, I no. And actually that that's an easy answer, which is no, hula's for anyone and everyone. Again, it just comes down to intention and coming with it with the right mindset. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter if they're from the continent or um, you know, from around the country, come in with the right intention. It's the same thing for Hawaii in general. Intention, permission, um, humbleness, um, want to learn and, and, and things of that sort. Come in with those values. Um, it doesn't matter who you are, where you came from. Um, you're good, you know. Uh, doing, doing this film as a filmmaker, how did this film change your life, actually? Uh, and I alluded to it in the beginning, but it, it changed my life a lot. I, um, you know, I, I think I was, I didn't see uh, the spirituality of hula and the, the heaviness uh, of what comes with hula until we made this film. And the making it and um, sculpturing the film I always, we always had the mindset of how can we put people in the same place that we are in right now, which is we're, we're learning as we're going along and feeling this, um, like we're honored to be in that same space and, uh, feel like we're witnessing, um, something very special. Uh, and then also remembering this happens every year, you know, um, and, I was so moved and I, I think I'm going to be friends by, with, with all the halal, you know, for life. Um, we become family. Uh, but it was so heavy and deep when you finally see them at the end win and, uh, and going on the journey with them. I mean, our, our journey was more abbreviated than theirs, but just it felt like we, we went on the journey with them. And that's, well, hopefully people will feel when they see the film as well. Have you thought about uh, filming uh, another perspective of Hawaiian culture or another facet of Hawaiian culture? Oh, yeah. This is a, a, a topic we're, we're having a lot these days, which is I feel like we're just scratching the surface with the film. I feel like this could be a series. Like uh, there's a lot more that people didn't see. Um and there's also other elements of uh, Hawaiian culture that I feel is just fascinating, like paneolos. Um, for anyone that uh, don't, doesn't know who, what paneolos are, Hawaiian cowboys, um, and how music is important with that. Um, and uh, there's a whole, that story is, to me is fascinating. Um, and there's many more like that, but just even in the hula world, um, it goes way deeper than what we covered. And uh, I feel like um, people would be really interested in seeing and hearing it. And um, this is going to be my last question, actually. Who did you make the film for? Was it for yourself first? Was it for the Hawaiian people? Was it for the whole world to say, hey, we exist over here? Uh, who was it for? Or for, your, for the next generation? Well, the, the honest answer to that is Hawaiian Airlines. We made it for Hawaiian Airlines. <laughs> however, however, yeah, that's the, that's the honest and factual answer. But, but uh, I would say, you know, after you talk, you meet with everyone and you start going on the journey because all they told us is just keep shooting and figure it out, right? Um, for me, after like a day one or day two is like, we're going to do this right. And the reason we're going to do it right is this film matters. Like this is like important that we stick the landing and that it's important because like I said, in my previous point, you're preserving this, right? It's a living document. Um, so it's not just making a film that we feel is going to be great, but this lives on forever. It gets passed on, gets passed down. And it's a, it's a document for Taija. It's a document from Kamalani. And, and that family, the whole family, and as well as Kaleo and Tao's uh, halal. So I felt like it was my duty 
And, and I think I'm going to go off of what Lono and Keanu told me, which is, I go, why, why are you guys so tough? You know, like they're, they're yelling and screaming and there's far more than that's in the film. But Keanu was like, it's cool. Just get it, get it. And you use it. Uh, Cause he goes, it's real. And it's like, Oh, sorry. My dogs are going nuts, but no they're, they're, yeah, they're like, uh, um, they said that um, it's because the hula demands it, you know? So in the same way, I felt like the film demanded that we do this for everyone. All right. So, uh, Maru Ruroa, thank you so much for uh, this film. I wish you the best of luck. And thank you for all the respect that we saw inside the movie, the respect about the culture, the respect and your vision about uh, Hula. That was very interesting. So good luck with this festival, the FIFO, and uh, I hope we will find you again next year in this festival. Thank you. Yeah, we, we got more, hopefully, you know, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Say hi to the to the dog. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Bye. Voilà, c'était donc Inside the Dog avec le réalisateur de Kahua Kai, euh, un film que vous retrouvez dans notre sélection FIFO 2021. Merci beaucoup, Malarururua.